use logic. I mentioned time and time again, R is a very simple product, a very, very simple program. Logic in your sales presentation, we did some role plays again, but I'll, I'll reiterate what we have in the binder. The logic that you want to follow may be something along the lines of, hey, new residents move into the market each and every month. New residents need products and services that you provide. New residents are going to find you or one of your competitors. We know where they live. We know how to get their attention. And all we do is deliver your generous gift to them under the banner of Town Hall. Again, that's in the binder. Very straightforward. Do not overcomplicate the issue. Logic in running your business. Um, again, we talked about identifying local businesses. Uh, use the town hall approach to get in front of people. Check out the videos. Present our program, emphasizing our civic town hall approach and exclusivity. You're going to be the only pizzeria, the only hair salon, the only dry cleaner. Use it. If I'm talking to Tony's Pizzeria and all of a sudden I say, look, yeah, I'm not sure I got to talk to my partner. All right, Tony. I used my, what we talked about before. I can only feature one pizzeria. I'm going to hold it for you, Tony. Um, but as a small business owner, what's your cell phone? And let me know when you're going to talk to your partner and when I should follow up with you. As in return, as again, a small business owner like yourself, I'm going to hold this category for you, but let me know either way. You know, because I was going to stop at Vinny's. You know, I saw Vinny's on the way. So use their competition. Use the name. You know, Tony, I'm not going to stop at Vinny's now because I told you I hold the category. But we have an agreement. You're going to get back to me. So, again, use your own personal style, but don't be afraid to pepper in the uh, competition and use their name to get through there. Uh, town hall approach. We talked about it before. And I'll, uh, I'll mention it briefly again, and I'll, I don't want to overemphasize or beat, beat this uh, silly, but do not underestimate the value of our company name, of our logo, of our civic spin. Use it at all possible touch points with a prospect. When you first walk in, I don't know if I did it in my video, but sometimes I find myself saying, oh, I'm with Town Hall. I need the owner or manager, but I might brush across my chest or as I'm walking in, yeah, excuse me, I'm with the town hall and I'll point to my logo. Probably not necessary, but it's something that I do use once in a while. Use it. Right? Once in a while, someone say, are you really from town hall? Oh, no. Uh, I'm with town hall guide. We work with all the municipalities in the area to do their new resident welcome kit for people who move into Montclair, for instance. So don't back away, don't be, don't be afraid, don't be embarrassed. We're not doing, that's our company, that's the value it brings. And then emphasize it, emphasize it, emphasize it in appointments, use the logic to let the people know that this is what Town Hall, uh, what, what our company name, why people will open the envelope, why people react to it. Quite frankly, I get calls every month, people say, where do I get my building permits? Where do I get my pool badges? We're not trying to fool anyone. But the fact is, many recipients do think it's town hall, at which time I just ask questions. You know, I tell them I'm a small business owner. Um, but while I have them on, 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 a, on the horn, because I go online to find the information they're looking for, I do ask questions. My first question is typically, what did you think of when you first saw the envelope? I, I mentioned in the role play, I can't tell you how many times I heard, at first I got scared. Not trying to scare them. Not trying to fool them. Then I say, well, what did you think of the welcome kit? I loved it. I loved it. I get it all the time. I got people call me up and say, oh, I just moved into such and such a town, and this is the first time that anyone's ever, it's fantastic. Uh, one individual had her husband was in the service. They moved all around the world, just got a haircut from Americana. She's going to use all the gift tickets. They do enjoy and appreciate it. Be proud of what we provide. But again, some people do think we're town hall, which is part of our thing. So use it. Use our logo, use our company name, use our envelope. People get it, prospects get it. Also, leaving messages. I'm with Town Hall. Be very, you can leave a card. People call, what, what's this about? Uh, leave a message. I'm with Town Hall. Please have them call me back. My name is Joe Fioria. My number is 973 uh, such, such, such. Um, in telemarketing, lead with the Town Hall approach, much like we do on a cold call. This is Joe Fiore with Town Hall. I need to speak with the owner or manager. 
Uh, when you're telemarketing, and I have it in the scripts here, which is something that you're going to you know, find your own voice, use pauses, be firm without being overbearing, and always start with your name and the fact you're with Town Hall. This is Joe Fiore. I'm with Town Hall. Pause. They're thinking, who is this? Town Hall. It works. This is Joe Fiore. I'm with Town Hall. I need to speak to the owner or manager. I need, not I want to, I, I need to speak with the owner or manager. You can go through the rest of the approaches and there's different ways you can do it. That's the most important part. Lead with the town hall approach, mention it, pause, and be, without being pushy, be kind of an authoritative type of tone. Heck, you're with town hall. Uh, we go through covering, uh, overcoming objections uh, about how much does it cost. That depends on how much people move into the community. Don't talk. Don't get into a business selling conversations uh, on the phone. Get the appointment. Get the appointment. Whether it's telemarketing, even on a cold call is discussed. The next section in your manual is a day in life. I'm going to breeze through this fairly quickly, uh, but I did want to call your attention to how we structured the manual uh, and the day in the life and what it took to be successful. And I, I see it as three different distinct modes. Uh, launch mode is when you're first starting your business, you're out there, you're running around like crazy, opening towns as fast as possible, bringing on new sponsors. Um, so the day in the life will be a little different than when you're in growth mode. Uh, in growth mode, you're going to be taking care of your current sponsors, filling in, maybe backfilling uh, some categories that might leave the program while opening up new towns as well. Uh, so still an aggressive growth type of proposition. And then you have the Maintenance mode, which is what everyone wanted to get to, where you're pretty much where you need to be. By definition, you're just replacing any sponsors that might leave the program, and uh, your time is yours to do what you will, whether it be with family or other pursuits. Um, so each individual mode has variations on what a successful day looks like. Please look through your program. I think some of the things that are always, and this is again sales 101 or 102, whatever you want to call it, Plan your day, do the non-selling activities outside of prime selling hours. Prime selling hours in our business is really 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., okay, with certain categories, 7 till 9 p.m., thrown in for good measure, okay? And you can figure that out. A hair salon uh, is a lot different than a pizza parlor. A pizza parlor, you're not going to show up at, at noon. Uh, at, at lunchtime or at dinner time, etc. So that's kind of intuitive. Um, Another given or uh, static type of, uh, I think, uh, pursuit or, or uh, skill set, something you want to do is also always put into Zoho, our CRM, your activities, your prospects, grow the business. Information is important, vital. Why two years down the road, three years down the road, if a category comes open, why not have the fact that you met Tony at Vinny's Pizza and they weren't going to do it because they were involved in a, uh, a Valpac program and wanted you to come back in six months but uh, you signed up uh, uh, you know Carmelo's Pizza in the meantime. So the bottom line is you did the work, you had appointments, you have contacts, put that into Zoho, also your follow-ups, plan your day, be organized, sales 103 if you will. Uh, so look through the growth mode the maintenance mode, or I should say really launch mode, etc. Um, and we'll look what the small variations of what a successful day is. It, it's not that earth shattering. The sales binder, I'll touch on this real quick. You each have, uh, have gotten or will receive a sales binder. Uh, it's a recommended format, which is right in there in terms of the recommended format of the flow in terms of our proof source articles, uh, information about where we get our data compilation etc so there's a, you're gonna make this your own and you can play with the binder but uh, the two things I want to touch on no prospect no two prospects are the same so you'll change your approach with binders. we have a short presentation and a long presentation both uh, both represented in here the short presentation I recommend for those driver personalities you walk into a pizzeria and and you get an appointment with the guy he's like ah you only got five minutes uh, again, North Jersey, you're going to get a lot of that. I'm not going to go through the longer presentation. There, that driver personality, I'm going to hit them with the short presentation. I'm going to show them my product up front. 
I'm going to tell them what I can do. I can get new people in here, uh, and here's how I can do it, why I can do it, and why you should go after those new residents. Okay? With a more of a uh, analytic type personality, a set appointment, this you might find in a, a restaurant chain, someone with multiple locations, more of a corporate environment at a Firestone or something like this, where you're speaking with a manager. Then you might want to get into the long presentation where it leads them through why new residents, how do we get new resident information, uh, the value and the psychology of a new resident. That's in the longer presentation, but I guess the point is you will learn this. Each prospect is different. Each prospective sponsor is different. You will learn to find your own voice and um, meld your presentation accordingly. Uh, and as far as the presentation goes, uh, I recommend you always, always do mention the statistics of new movers, that they're five times more likely. That's probably the most powerful statistic on that page. The chart is nice to show, it's visually uh, pleasing, etc. Uh, but five times more likely. And also the compilation of how you get data. Uh, they may not ask, but you need to mention and show them that this is the data we don't pull out of the sky. And if they don't voice that objection, always show the comp our compilation process and breeze through it if you need to but it might be an unspoken objection that um, may cost you a deal if, if you don't overcome it even if they haven't verbalized it so that's all for the presentation manual the rest of the manual uh, it's all self-explanatory but i did want to cover these keys to success uh, maybe bring a little more life to it and and hopefully give you a better understanding with expounding upon it uh, thanks for watching. We'll be talking to you soon.